Hi guys, welcome to an episode of Luke's Garage and today we're going to have a quick look at the Beaver CNC HDZ and Universal G Code Sender which I always call Universal Google Sender by accident. Now to start off with, um, the version I'm using is a nightly platform build. Um, I find it plenty stable but it's just got a slightly nicer user interface and it's got more features than the standard releases. I think it's version 2 point something and um, there's, a, there's a great chap, I think his name's Winder, who's the guy building this. Very good bit of kit. Now, the first thing you might find if you're on a Mac, it's slightly different to open. If you go into your file and go into the bin, it's then under UGS platform. Now, I had a small issue when I started loading this software, and that's that my Mac would go really, really hot, and the fans would go nuts. I found installing and updating the latest Java fix this. Um, Grant Sloan did that probably a few weeks ago and been using it for months as it was. You'll get a little um, warning saying it is a nightly build popping up on your screen as well. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is connect to your board and to do so you can see along the top here we've got uh, a little connection button but you can see GR, BL, gerbil. You've got your port there and it's showing as USB modem. I'm just going to click refresh and you can see that board is uh, 11520 and now I've connected to my machine. The alarm switch is gone because I haven't homed it and then it's really easy just to home your machine. Let's click the home button and there he is. So he's just doing that homing cycle. And now my alarm has gone off and you can see I've got a five millimeter offset on each axis. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you is just where you can change the machine settings. And this hands down is the easiest way to change machine settings. I thoroughly recommend it. And if you're doing your install, please use this because I could never in a million years get carboid motion to do this. You go to the file menu, sorry, machine menu, go to firmware settings, you then have a list of all your settings and what you can and can't change. It also, on the right hand side, says what the setting is that you're changing. It's amazing. And then once you've got your settings, you're happy with them, you can also export them or import them. So if, if for any reason you ever change boards, you can upload those settings. Now, I'm not gonna run through the settings changes that um, uh, are detailed on the on the blog and instructions because I feel that's you know teaching you to suck eggs. Uh, but have a look at those and make sure you change those before you use your machine. After you change them, you need to click save, and you also might have to press enter rather than going back. Just confirm they're changed. Now I'm going to close that down. To jog your machine around is dead easy. You've got on the left on the left hand side you've got your uh, details. You've got millimeters or inches. I work in millimeters. You've got your step size for X and Y, and then you've got your Z step size, also very useful. You've also got your feed rate. So if I want to jog it by 25 mil, X, that way, left, that way. We have it moving. Same for Z. We can just move that really nice and easily. Uh, a very useful feature for everyone is the G53 command, and this is coordinates. So you can set up macros in this software. If you go to the file menu, sorry, um, where is he set? Um, UGS platform, click on preferences, go across to UGS. We can then go to macros on the right hand side, and we can put macros in. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to make my axes go to the left slightly. I'm going to call this um, machine middle. The G code I think is G53 and then it'd be X minus 200, for example. And that means it's going to move the X axis 200 mil that way. And I'll just put This is really testing my skills. So I've done any um, coding for a while. Click on OK. And now we've got that uh, up here. 
we then have a uh, where's he got to go to tools uh, macros there's our macro there click zero and you might not have seen that but it's moved it um, by 200 mil to the left by using that macro now you can also have macros in these little boxes by going to uh, tools where is that trying to find a bloody thing now I'm not sure where he's gone but you can have macros on this side bit I do find the these modules move around a little bit and that's probably the most annoying thing for me um, you can obviously set a G53 command so that's moving it it's not changing zero it's just moving it around where you want so if you wanted to bring it right to the front of the machine so if you wanted to bring it the Shafiko from there so the bottom left hand side you would do G53 X minus 400 Y minus 400 and that would take it to that approximate coordinate you do have your coordinates in this bottom left here as well so you can always see where it is and something that's quite cool is you've got um, the machine coordinates and also zero so you can use those as and where you please now the last thing I'll show you quickly is the probe module and um, this is quite cool because it allows you to use any type size touch probe um, and also any size end mill so in the settings you can use your uh, different coordinate systems millimeters or inches you've got your end mill diameter measure feed rate uh, your fast feed so what it will do is it'll probe fast and then it probes slow so it uses this one first then this feed rate and then you've got the retract amount so how much after the probe will it uh, retract that's 15 mil now if you were doing x y and z you've got your x distance now assuming you're using your carbide motion probe i think that's like seven mil y is seven and 22 is the x sorry z um, you've then got your offsets as well of how much things move and your touch probe thickness. Now with the z-axis again you've got the touch probe thickness now if you're using it without the edges um, so it's level it's 22 mil if you're using it with ledges it's 25. Uh, the thing you need to consider is how far will it probe down so that means how far above the probe is it before it's going to hit. I leave mine as, um, uh, as 10 but you need to put minus 10 for it to go down. So if I do minus 10, initiate probe, it can't probe because I've not got a probe attached. You can see it's moving downwards and it flags an error saying it can't probe because I have no probe attached. That's just saying it didn't hit it. So I'll click OK to get rid of those. And I can unlock the machine, so now it's back to where it started. If I want to home again, you can either uh, you can home the machine. And you can see it's doing its homing cycle. And the last thing I think I'll talk about is just once you found your uh, datum, your zero point, so let's move it around a little bit. Move that down. You then go to reset zero. So notice these coordinates here, say 105, etc. Click reset zero, and that's starting or showing you the start of where the job will be, and it will remember those coordinates. Anyway, guys, I hope that's been somewhat useful, and I'm really keen to see some of you guys set up your HDZs. Any questions, just shoot them over. I'm around uh, boxing up more HDZs to go out uh, to you guys or the next batch of customers. So thanks for watching. Bye.